So, Miss Clayton, um, I understand that you had a session for parents a couple days ago, weeks. or a week ago, weeks ago, that was about um, the student brain. What, what's that all about? <laughs> We've been having sessions at our school since I began uh, two years ago. And really, the goal is to connect with parents yeah. and to share research around a particular topic, mm -hmm. usually connecting with learning and the brain, mm -hmm. um, in an area that would interest them so that we can talk together about it and what it means for us as parents or at the school as educators. So it's a great opportunity to come together and, and share ideas. Okay, so the main, the, the title of the session was called the three F's, so feedback, failure, and figuring it out. Figuring it out. So can you talk about um, the failure bit and what that means because yeah, it's yeah. kind of intimidating, hey? Yeah, it is. It is as a, as a student and mm -hmm. it is as a parent. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed there was a book out this fall called, by a guy, a journalist called Paul Tuff, mm -hmm. and and it, he was talking about success and how the definition of success is shifting. Mm -hmm. We used to think that if you had a high IQ, mm -hmm. uh, you were bound for success. And so mm -hmm. you go through school, you do really well, and off you go to university, woohoo, it's all good. Mm -hmm. What he's noticed in his research, and he took three years to write this book, wow. um, and talk to a lot of folks, educators, psychologists, even economists are looking mm -hmm. at this. What he's noticing is it isn't just IQ, it's more than that. Mm -hmm. And so he talks about how it's about pursuing or persevering, sorry, through failure mm -hmm. that actually builds success. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit ironic. It's kind of not what we would expect. Mm -hmm. And as a parent, very tricky to allow your kids to stumble and fall. Yeah. You know, even when you're little and you fall, they scoop you up, it's gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. And we continue to do that as parents. Mm -hmm. I have three children. I, I don't want them to fall, I want to support them. Yeah. But what we're noticing in the research is that for you to um, be your best, to be your most successful, mm -hmm. you're going to have to have some tricky times. Right. And, and students are going to have to figure these out um, with support to varying degrees mm -hmm. of parents, but ultimately they're going to be able, need to be able to do it on their own. And so how do we prepare our kids, K through 12, yeah. to, to be able to manage these disappointments and tricky times in a way that strengthens them for a future? So what were some of those ideas you had about how, how can we help our kids fail but not fail so they, <laughs> yeah. That's a great question. We did spend, and we do spend at these sessions, a fair bit of time on strategies. Mm -hmm. And so I looked at a couple of, um, there's a search institute out of the U.S. that really breaks down what we can do on a community level, yeah. on a family level. Okay. One of the things that, there were a lot of strategies we covered and I gave the resources mm -hmm. out, but one of the things that really spoke a lot and seemed to come up a lot both there and with the American Psychological Association mm -hmm. was the idea of connection. Mm -hmm. And having those particular dinner time conversations and we're also busy um, where we talk about what went well today what was a bit difficult how did you manage that you know and 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 keeping those communication lines open and purposeful mm -hmm. so that kids can say you know what I'm really struggling with X or Y and parents can can listen and support but not swoop in and rescue uh, so I know you mentioned something called grit. I'm not really sure what that means, so would you yeah. want to clarify? Sure, yeah. yes. Um, so in Paul Tuff's book, he speaks of a woman called Angela Duckworth, mm -hmm. who's done quite a lot of work on this thing she calls grit. Mm -hmm. and, and she would define it as sort of tenacious perseverance, mm -hmm. like I'm not giving up. And, uh, and what Paul was saying and what other researchers are concurring with is this element of grit is so important to success. It's, it's right up there with, you know, IQ and talent and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, she did research and she would have students come to her and say, well, you know, I ran a fundraiser last week and I, I stayed up, you know, for four nights in a row trying to raise money for this. And she said to that student, when you've done that next month and next month till next year, come back and talk to me because grit is not an in the moment thing I was amazing it's sustained sort of passion over time and mm -hmm. perseverance so it's we're looking for our kids to you know continue to be passionate about and, and push through tricky times but over time not just mm -hmm. in a moment yeah so that's what she meant with by grit and I think it's a it's a really amazing idea she did all kinds of tests and looked at um, you know people that did spelling bees and different math kinds of and chess and, and and what she's noticing is that 
IQs in that mix, mm -hmm. but it isn't as strong as grit. Yeah. And self-discipline is in that mix, but grit wins out over that as well. So she actually has a grit test, and I gave that out to the parents to take mm -hmm. so that you could answer these 12 questions and go, oh, this is where I sit on the grit scale. All right. so, so for kids that don't have grit, like yeah. I know my little sister, not so little <laughs> fingers, but how would you help your kid develop some sort of grit like that? I think, she, I think she would talk about, and we're going to do a little bit more work on this in our next session, mm -hmm. um, because there are other researchers that support her work. Uh, Carol mm -hmm. Dweck talks about um, a fixed or growth mindset, so we're going to look at that. But in, in this particular instance, I think it's about um, talking through and supporting without taking over. Mm -hmm. Right, so if a student is struggling with, um, you know, thinking about my own children, when they struggle with something, I, I'm a mom who would jump in and have 14 solutions in a heartbeat, <laughs> but I'm trying to back myself up and say things like, so what's your plan for that? What are you thinking about doing? How are you going to manage that? How are you going to manage that? Mm -hmm. Now, that would look different from someone your age to a, yeah. you know, six-year-old or a grade four or mm -hmm. a grade seven, but essentially we want to... Um, have the conversations that position you, the student, mm -hmm. in a place that says we're confident and we're going to support you, but we're not going to rescue you. You're going to figure this tricky thing out. So they can develop the, the so skills. They, they have to tough it out. I think to some yeah. degree they have to tough it so out. It kind and of leads in with the failure kind of bit. Yeah, it, and the, and the idea, as you said initially, about resilience. You know that you know continuing to just. Yeah, this isn't, but we learn, we learn from, we started the, the series with a thing on, a uh, video on failure, and all the people we look up to, Michael Jordan, Einstein, like all these amazingly successful people, had so many failures. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, you know, they, the, the video would have said you don't have success unless you've tried something and failed. Like, they, they kind of go together. Okay. That's cool, yeah.